Okay, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I have the um, Dungeons Master's Guide open. I've got an appendix for random dungeons. They can be a little incoherent, depending on uh, how true you stay to the charts and how random it really gets, but eh, we're gonna see what happens. Um, I already rolled on some different charts to determine uh, kind of the purpose of the dungeon, um, the location of it, uh, a little bit of the history, just to kind of have a base idea for what I'm what I'm doing and what I may or may not uh, disregard. Basically, this dungeon is beneath a ruined castle. It was built as a tomb, and the creators were destroyed by a natural disaster of some sort. So that uh, opens up a lot of opportunity for things like caved-in passages if they go somewhere they really shouldn't, or blocked off entrances, or things like that. Um, it also means that I'm going to be disregarding most uh, stairs results on the passages, as I'm going to make this just one level. I'm kind of making it large and long, um, you kind of see there. I counted up, I've got a grid base already, and the squares are about 36 squares across, and 60 up that way, that's how much space I'm giving myself to play with. Um, so that's uh, like 180 feet by 300 feet. Um, not the biggest dungeon, by any means, but uh, you know, enough to, enough to have a bit of fun. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with a starting area. Let's say D10 on the charts. You're gonna hear a little bit of rattling of an actual die as I'm sitting here. Um, but I'll kind of narrate what I'm getting as I get. That's a 10. Passage, 10 foot wide, four way intersection. So I'm just kind of blocking this out with white on the black. I'm starting down at the bottom here. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit of a five foot clearance and I'm gonna start kind of in the middle presuming that um, the entrance to the castle might be somewhere in the center above, also that gives me room to kind of go left, right, and up as I go along. So let's kind of start about there. Um, so you're gonna have stairs going down into this. Oh, passage width is also a good thing to have. Uh, let's do the full D20, so it could potentially be a very wide opening passage. So I roll that. I got a 20. It's a why I'm, I'm rolling high numbers here. Um, so it's 40 foot wide, 20 foot high, gallery 10 feet above floor, allows access to level above. There is no level above necessarily, so we're ignoring that. However, it is going to be a 40 foot wide, 20 foot high passageway. I don't really have a way to demarcate the height, but uh, this is a big one. So we've got... Let's start over here about... Whoops, come on. Don't do that to me. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. And that was... Oh, it did say ten feet wide passage. Well. You know what? I didn't think it through. I'm just gonna go with it. Um, it does not say how long the passage would have been. So I'm just gonna... Hmm. Maybe I'll reverse that. 10 foot wide, but I'll give it a 40 foot long. It's going to start a little off center for that reason. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Yep, there we go. So, we've got that beginning area. It's got a four way intersection, which means it does continue onward some extent there. I'm just going to give it a little little uh, par partial thing to remind myself, and I'm going to say that the passage continues 10 foot in the intersection, however, um, that might change as we go along. So I'm going to keep that at a 10 foot wide up until it either hits a chamber or has some reason to split. So for passage, I've got three passages I need to do. Uh, let's kind of go, let's kind of go around the uh, clock as it were. So starting on the left hand side, I got a D20 roll for the passage, detail, 14. Continues straight 20 feet, and then the passage turns right and continues 10 feet. So, we've got 
5, 10, 15, 20, and then it turns right and continues 10 feet. So, um, I think about turning right, I'm going to let it have an extra 5 foot breathing room. 5, 10, just because I've made this such a wide beginning passageway. Let's kind of square that off a little bit better. There we go. A little nick in the corner, but it won't hurt anything. Okay. Uh, end of that passage. Let's see. Roll. Roll multiple times on the passage, extending the length and branches until you arrive at a door or chamber. Alright. Okay. So that pretty much just continues. Um, that's another d20. That's an 18. Oh, chamber. Roll on the chamber table. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll come back to that. I might just continue on the passages for a little bit. Oh, on second thought, that chamber could be big. Let's do the chamber first. First time doing this. Uh, seven on the chambers. Uh, rectangle, 20 by 30 feet. And technically, that can probably, that doesn't have to be centered, so I'm probably gonna scoot it off this way just to give it a little bit of space. So I'll start about five feet here. So let's uh, let's make the rectangle go that way. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 10, 15, 20. So it's not a big chamber. It's a fairly small one right there. Um, probably serves about some purpose. Uh, let's see. So I've got that chamber exits is another d20. That's to determine whether it goes um, any particular ways. Uh, this is a normal chamber, so we use that column. I rolled a 5. There are zero exits in a normal chamber of this size, so this is just this little side room right here. Um, I think the exits sometimes can be secret doors. Yep, if it's the door, you roll in the door ta table, potentially. Um, however, that one is a dead end. Uh, some little side chamber, kind of in this entry area. Um, maybe it's a small chapel, maybe a preparatory area, given that this is a tomb. Uh, maybe it's a kind of a side... Um, oh, what's the word? A uh, side chapel, where people could have uh, gone to um, kind of speak with their dead, the way you might stand in front of a gravestone or the like. However, we're going to go on to this next passage, going straight upwards, so we're going to d20. That's a 2. Uh, continue straight 30 feet, no doors or side passages. So this is going to keep on going. Wish it didn't do that. So, that's a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Another d20, as it continues on. That is a 4. Continue straight 20 feet, door to the left, then an additional 10 feet ahead. All right, so we've got our first, stop it, first door. So 5, 10, 15, 20. There's going to be a door on the left-hand side, and then it's going to go another 10 feet. So I'm just going to give the 10-foot thing there. Um, go to another layer. And let's go ahead and make a stroke on this layer just to make this whole door thing a little bit easier. Make that black. Three pixels sounds good. And I'm going to make a little door. So door on the left. So that's gonna, that's gonna open up to something just beyond that uh, first chamber. That'll be interesting. Um, let's say that it's right about there. Just a little like, five foot door probably. Yeah, there we go. So door type. Roll on the d20 chart. It's a four. It's just a simple wooden door beyond the door. d20, it get 11. Uh, another chamber. Roll on the chamber table. A lot of d20s. So that's a 19. Oh hell, that's an octagon. <laughs> I've got a 60 by 60 foot octagon. Hmm. Let's see, do I have 60 feet to work with? That's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I should. 12. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. However, Octon, that's a, hmm, that's a whole nother beast. 
let's see what I can get. Polygon on eight sides on that little bugger. Go back to here. Actually, I might just make a new layer so I can shift it around. Um, hmm. Oh, oh, it did that. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna have to clearly put this kind of in the middle just in order to get the damned thing. So let's see. That looks like it's about 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Eh, blah, blah, blah. A little bit bigger. Alright. It's not perfect, but it's close. So, we got this great big stop sign of a chamber. Hmm. Ooh, that, uh, that could get tricky. Yep, this is where we start fudging things just a little bit in order to make them work. Because we've got a great big octagon chamber here. A, we've got to actually scoot it so that there's a bit of wall. B, um, it may or may not be exactly 60. C, we need to scoot this door up a little bit. So. The door is actually going to be kind of at the culmination of that, uh, that good enough. Alright, so we've got a great big chamber here. Um, potentially you can kind of attach, uh, doorways. You can connect areas that, uh, are right next to each other but otherwise not connected just to make more paths and give players more options, so. We might actually go ahead and go back to our rectangle tool. There we go. And let's go ahead and make another door right there, just to just to connect between the areas, just a passage. So we've got a couple of ways into octagon room. Meanwhile, this octagon is a great big chamber, and we need to determine how many other exits there are. That might count for one. So I got a 16. In a large chamber, there are three exits. So I'm going to say that's a one, a two, and then there's a third somewhere up here. It's not going to make sense to go that way. Um, it might go north. That's the one that makes the most sense. So I'm not going to bother rolling on the chart that says exactly where that exit is. I'm just going to say that it's up here. Um, however, there is a potential for exit type, whether it's a door or a corridor. So a two means that it is another door. So we're gonna roll door type. We're gonna roll a little bit of a uh, little bit of um what's beyond the door type of door is iron. So that might so there might be something important beyond there, um, or that could just be you know random dressing. Let me uh let me scoot that upwards just a little bit. And you know what? I'm going to edit the stroke on these. Whoops. So that is just a little bit, a uh, little bit more. Oh, and I want the opacity there. That's that's a little bit better. I didn't realize the opacity was that low. So four pixels. That's a nice thick line. We got it. Okay. Beyond the door. Seventeen is another chamber. So uh, we're we're butting that chamber up against a lot of things. So that's a rectangle. Fifty by eighty feet. We're very quickly running out of space. Um, <laughs> so, right away, right away we've got, oh, let's go ahead and, uh, since we're done resizing that, we can scoot that down. Right away. Um, it's not going to be perfectly centered, so let's put this out to about, uh, right about there. So that's a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, actually. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. I probably should scoot that up because it looks like it adjoins. So, Control Z, let's start that over just a little bit. There we go. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. That's a nice big chamber. So we got that now. Um, 
I believe that counts as a large chamber. Let me just double check. Yes, it does. Of course it does. So how many exits does this have? I've got a four on a large chamber. There's only one exit, and we've got it right there. So that's going to be it for that chamber, unless it just naturally joins to something else. We need to continue on this passage, because it did not reach a ending point yet. So 18. Oh, it ends on a chamber. Um, I'm going to say that... Uh, it can't really end in a chamber, it just ends right there. So, um, I might just go ahead and uh, back that off just a little bit. It pretty much ends on that right hand turn door. So, um, that being done, let's go ahead and move on to this other passage. Got a 12, continues straight for 20 feet, then it turns left, which is convenient, and continues 10 feet. So we're going to go a 5, 10, 15, 20. And I'm once again going to fudge it just a little bit because I made a wide passage, and that goes for about 10 feet up. Let's widen that passage out just a little bit. I missed a little bit. There we go. All right, that continues. Uh, 20 stairs, um, which means I'm rolling again because I'm not doing any multiple levels in this. This is a single level dungeon. So that's a four. Continue straight 20 feet door to the left, then an additional 10 feet ahead. So uh, we got that again. We got that side thing. So it might hook up with that. Um, it might just make sense to do that. So we've got five, 10, 15, 20. There's a door that's not going to really lead much of anywhere unless it's a tiny storage closet. And then it continues another 10. So uh, we're going to go ahead and stick this door in. Just so that we see it there. However, there is at least a chance beyond the door that uh, it's just going to hook up with that other passage for some reason. So I got a 13. Yeah, that's a chamber. Um, unless I get a... I don't think I can get a chamber small enough to fit. No, I do not. I do not get a chamber small enough to fit. So, um, you know what? You know what? This is just gonna, this is just gonna turn into a, hmm. Let's call this a storage closet, okay? There's a tiny little five foot storage closet. I'm sure that, um, whoever runs this tomb needs to store something. And if need be, that can just be taken out at the end. Uh, <laughs> we do what we must. So, that's a five to continue the passage. We have a continue straight 20 feet passage ends in a door. So, that's going to be fun. One, two, three, four, that's 20 feet. And we've got a door at the end. So... This is not going to be a secret door. I rolled a 19 on the door type. Um, this passage is not going to obviously dead end. I'm sorry. That's uh, begging for adventurers to just get confused. Uh, anyway, it's a wooden door. Beyond the door, we've got an 11. There is another chamber. Roll on the chamber's table. A 12. Rectangle, 30 by 40 feet. That is a small chamber. So... Let's go ahead and let's get that door in here first. Um, not going to be sent. Yeah, let's go ahead and center the door right in this middle-y portion. The little door. There we go. Okay, rectangle, 30 by 40 feet. Let's kind of bring it out that way this time. So we're going to start about, mm, let's say here-ish. Bring it up just a little bit so that we've got a black line. That's uh, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, that'll do. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So we've got a chamber. A uh, number of exits in this chamber. That skipped and ends up on top of my thing. Oh dear, 20. Um, normal chamber, there are four exits. Uh, probably want to say one on each wall, but let's see if any lead back down this way. I'm going to ignore any result that goes this direction just because it's a little bit ridiculous. So exit location, D20. Wall opposite entrance for one. Uh, 11. Wall left of entrance, my disregard. So we're re-rolling that, we're re-rolling it again. 
16, right of entrance. Okay, so opposite, right. Um, I'm going to either take the opposite or the same wall, if depending on what I get. So there might be a reroll. Okay, opposite. Two on the opposite, one on the right. So we're going to go ahead and let's kind of space them out here. Just, oh, nope, 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 nope. Stop doing that. I swear. So one there. Let's say about one there. And one right there. Oh, technically I needed to roll to decide if they were doors or corridors. <laughs> Alright, one's a corridor, one's a door, one's a door. Uh, one of those is going to be a corridor. I'm going to say that these two are doors. I'm going to make that last one just a corridor, just to make that a little easier. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a passage just to get that done. I'm going to make this one a little narrower. I'm only going to do a five foot now that we've gotten past the main entrance. Uh, it also does a little bit more um, space. Let's see. Uh, yeah, um, that went straight to chamber, so I'm gonna give it a f like a five, maybe ten foot uh, lead. Just because most of the corridor, yeah, pretty much every passage thing continues like twenty, maybe thirty feet. So I'm gonna give this one a good ten before it opens into a chamber. Uh, if this chamber is ridiculously large, it might be interesting fitting it on the map. I just got an 18, which I'm pretty sure is big. Um, so a chamber... Oh, I'm sorry, did I say 15? I'm saying I meant 18. Which is an octagon? I'm ignoring that. I'm, I'm re-rolling that. I'm not doing another octagon in here. Uh, rectangle, 40 by 50 feet, so kind of big. Um, but I can kind of stretch it down this way. So let's go ahead and kind of start it up here. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, let's make it 35 and let's add another 5 feet on there just to get some of the dimensions in. So there's a short corridor that leads to another chamber right here. Um, Technically, I think that one's... Yep, that one's a big chamber. Let's see how many other exits there are. I got a five on there. There's only one exit, and that is the corridor that leads to the side. So we've already got that. Now, beyond these doors, let's go left and right. Left is a 20. It's a false door with a trap. So, uh, any Tomb Raiders are in for a nasty surprise if they choose the wrong door. Um, I'm going to say it's completely up to the DM if these doors talk and one speaks truth and the other lies. Uh, yeah, that's a, that, that will be your call, your game. Beyond the other door, 15. We've got a chamber. I'm going to give a little bit of space before the chamber. I'm going to say that it gets like a five foot just a five foot block of uh, not quite hall before opening up just to give it some breathing room so rolled a three on chamber type that is a square 30 by 30 foot it's kind of yeah 30 by 30 that's not too big so we got a 5 10 15 20 25 30 that'll do 10 15 20 25 and 30. Number of exits, uh, 14. That's a two exit chamber because it's a small one. Um, I've got one to that door. Oh, I think that I left a little bit of a black line. Let me fix that. Uh, nope, and there we go. That's better. So I've got one. The other is located on the wall opposite the entrance. And it is a door. I just rolled two natural ones for those. That's fun. Um, <laughs> good thing it is of very little consequence here. So we're gonna... Hmm. Let's go ahead and do almost truly opposite. I'm gonna go ahead and just... Right there. So you've got a door. Let's see. Type of door, just because it could be fun. Uh, apparently a portcullis. Not locked in place. So far I've not gotten on any of these door types I've rolled I have not gotten a lock on a single one of them. Um, so ah, DM can do what they will if they want to use this. 
Anyway, beyond the door, that's a 12, that's another chamber. So, that's a 7. A uh, rectangle 20 by 30 feet, not a big one, but a little, little bit smaller than this last. Let's go ahead and butt this one right up against. That's a good 20. 15, 20, 25, and 30. So, chambers are gradually... Whoops, so oh no. Wrong layer. <laughs> Anyhow, chambers are gradually getting smaller. There we go, fix that. Ah, there we go. Alright, this one, seven for exits, there's one exit to this chamber, so we've already found it. I did not actually use all of the map, I could stop here, or I could just add a little more fun. That's always an option. Because um, frankly, this could be the big burial chamber, but that doesn't necessarily make sense if this is the false door for traps. The big burial chamber is probably just beyond here, so we're going to go ahead and end the uh, randomizing, and we're just going to make the biggest burial chamber, or burial chamber network, just kind of uh, doing little blocks here and there. However, we do need like the absolute biggest one for the most important way at the back here. Right there. So that is going to be the main area, the main chamber where, like, the kings are buried, their, uh, their riches are stored in vaults, and so on and so forth. Um, let's go ahead and say that this is, like, the final area before that. Like, this is a burial chamber for uh, some fairly important folks. That's the big secret one, however. Um, so this is kind of almost a red herring burial chamber. This is a temple right before it. Uh, this is a small chapel or a preparatory area right before the temple. Um, this is kind of like, not quite a back hall, but something like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this little useless storagey closet thing that I wound up with. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that as well. Because we don't need that door, it didn't lead anywhere. Um, oh, whoops. Deselect. Um, so we'll leave that be. Perhaps this area is the one with the uh, the little storage closet-y things. Uh, let's go ahead and... Let's, whoops. Let's do that. So that's the, uh, that's the side way in for various, um various priests, or the people who prepared the bodies, and so on and so forth, to kind of just go in this main entrance and go over here. Um, and we can go ahead and actually, um, for a um, second thought there, I always forget X, um, let's just, uh, let's just go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and make that a narrower corridor. There we go. That's like the surface corridor right there. Um, there might be another door just because it is... It's basically the employees only <laughs> entrance. The, the employees only go uh, way in. Kind of bypasses this uh, front waiting area if need be. Um, you just straight shot and go into a side door in this main temple area. Um, meanwhile, this fork goes up to uh, this area. Uh, let's say that these are. This is the entrance to like these. Um, it is under a castle. It's not necessarily going to be common catacombs, but the slightly more common catacombs. Um, so we can go ahead and add let's go ahead and add a few little uh, snaky catacomby areas just for just for the fun of it um, like that's the main area we can add some little caverny areas here they have uh, maybe a few rock formations in them little alcoves and Um, just places where 
it was without all of the uh, the fancy tombs and sarcophagus and so forth get laid to rest. Uh, this one's more like alcoves for um, cremation jars or the like uh, might be put. So we'll kind of kind of natural cavern that up a little bit. Uh, this room is a little bit more carved out of rock, perhaps. Um, might be another not quite templary. I don't think this is as common access as others might be. Um, it gets a little bit rougher here. There we go. Kind of round out some of these corners just a little bit. There we go. It was kind of do some more little pockets of stone, little caverns, uh, and so on and so forth. A very narrow passage there. Kind of snake it around, make little warrens almost with this. Say hey, why not? Let's uh, let's have some fun. Um, huh. Just really, uh, really rabbit this up a little. This is only if you uh, if you don't mind your adventures getting a little bit lost going in circles, because that's what happens when you have a map and you don't reveal it all at once. They have no idea what's going on. Um, <laughs> so if you don't want to use this area, just a uh, rock slide blocked off right there. You just uh, use what of the map you will. So we got that. Um, kind of more of the common areas. We got the false door with the terrible, terrible trap for tomb robbers who decide to get a little clever. The ones who get lucky and pick this side are no better. Um, not quite sure what this chamber would these chambers would have been for. Um, perhaps some more like uh, maybe a little bit more of the minor nobility like this is major nobility, this is pure royalty, this is minor nobility. So you kind of have this as the red herring, you know, oh, here's where all the Here's where all the treasures are. Here's where all the special stuff is. No, the actual, like, the heroes of old, the ones that uh, amassed the magic items and the dragon hordes and so on and so forth and maybe tried to take it with them in death, they're back here. And the way to get back there, there's going to be a secret door in here somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in a big double door right there. And let's go ahead and put in just one more antechamber. This one, maybe there's a little bit of a trap. Maybe there's a little bit of a riddle to be had about it. Um, you know, just, just for the fun of it, let's put some, uh, let's put some circular pillars, like, down the sides. That's fancy. It's a little rough, but we get the idea. There we are, there we are. Um, that bit's easy enough, however, in order to get to this, let's, uh, let's kind of loop something around here. Um, one more chamber. Maybe there's, uh, maybe there's a two-step, whoops, wrong tool, wrong color. Uh, maybe there's a two-step, like, testing process, trap process, that you have to kind of work your way through if you're an adventurer and you're going to get that far. Either these people, uh, whoever they were, were hoping maybe that their amassed treasure would some someday uh, go to some greater adventurer, some other hero, some good, or maybe they're just... Uh, hmm. Need to go back to the white instead of just staying on the black color. Maybe they're just a 
uh, weeding out the worthy, or maybe they just want to, you know, keep it for themselves. They are the uh, the dead keeping their treasures. Um, but that's another trap, uh, test chamber, call it what you will, for what purpose you want. Um, the way to get into it is there is a secret door, and for that purpose I'm gonna actually, like, put that door up here so that it doesn't show up on the visible map as you, like, cr uh, reveal rooms if they are hidden. Uh, you don't actually see that door. Um, when you reveal this particular block. The adventurers have to actually find it, they have to investigate it. Uh, DC ups up to you, of course. But if they do find it, very narrow passage, testing grounds. And if they manage to clear that, then perhaps another secret door either is found or automatically opens, your choice, um, right up there. So let's go ahead and redo that right there. And clearing that lets you advance. I'm going to make an awkward five foot wide uh, <laughs> corridor going halfway up the squares, because of course, but it lets you up into there. And there is that entire secret area. Um, So yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a dungeon. That is some fun. Um, got a false door. We got a couple of uh, secret doors. Some uh, a testing room, possibly two if you want to put something else in there. Um, otherwise, stock it with uh, maybe some shambling undead. Maybe something went wrong magically, or maybe some other monsters, or like a cult moved in, or something like that. Whatever makes sense for your campaign, your uh, players, your so on and so forth. Um, I'll probably add some little uh, sarcophagi and so on in these rooms, but for now it is unfurnished, but the layout is complete, so I'm going to call it done right there. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, we're going to call it quits. Uh, first randomized live dungeon, so to speak. Um, so that was interesting. Maybe I'll do it again sometime. Maybe it'll be something a little bit different. Uh, we'll see. Um, I'll go ahead and it, maybe I'll color this up. Maybe I'll uh, stock it or decorate it or something. Uh, either that or it'll stay black and white kind of like this and you can furnish as you will. Um, but I'll go ahead and I'll upload it probably on uh, DeviantArt or something, because that comes with a nice little option to download the original file at original size, which is convenient, and uh, yeah, if you play something online and you need a little bit of a little bit of a tomb, well, it's an option. So, have fun.